I wasn't originally drawn to the credit union sector by any particular vocation or dedication to financial inclusion originally. Through a family connection, I'd helped the credit union with some issues in a voluntary capacity. Um, and I found what they did interesting, but no more than that, really. But when a job opening arose, it seemed like a really good opportunity to get some more family-friendly hours than I was working at the time. Um, so I applied, and I was successful. But, as um, you've already heard tonight, from many of our speakers, um, financial inclusion gets under your skin. The more you do, the more you want to do, um, and the more you wish you could do. So before long, I'd completed post-grad studies in um, improving financial inclusion in low-income communities. Um, I was running budgeting workshops for parents in schools, and I was talking about not-for-profit finance to anybody that would stay still long enough. And sometimes... <laughs> <laughs> um, so this time last year, I became a trustee for um, a local advice charity because I felt it was, it was quite a good fit for me. I started paid employment for the credit union around the same time as I became part of St Mark's Church in Bushill Park. Uh, I remember attending a Lent course and I, was get re I got really excited because um, the leader of the course mentioned credit unions just in passing. Um, so I put up my hand and said, oh, I can take back credit unions. Um, and then when the Archbishop made that speech, we all know which speech I'm talking about, in July 2013, remember it well, it wasn't long after I'd started my new job. Um, and I tell you, it was like Christmas had come early to the credit union sector. It, we were everywhere, it was great. Um, and to me in particular, I felt like it was all meant to be. I felt like it was you know, all coming together very nicely. But I'd had a purpose. So the credit union, like most credit unions, is open to everyone regardless of faith. And unusually, possibly uniquely for a credit union in this country, we were actually launched by uh, local business leaders, mainly to provide finance to owners of small business and a savings scheme for council employees by our local council, both of which we still do today. So that was in 1994. And those of you who are still with me, still awake, you can work out actually next year, we'll be 25 years old. Exciting. Um, so, Obviously, I'm here to talk about affordable credit. So, in an ideal world, there would be no debt. We'd all live within our means, we'd save up for the things that we wanted, and we'd have a savings pot for emergencies. But, as we know, life isn't like that. Credit is easy to get, sometimes too easy in my opinion, and the poorest in society are the most vulnerable to financial shocks, but not the only ones vulnerable to financial shocks, as we've heard. According to a report released just last month, even those in employment struggle. Around a third of the UK's workers have less than £500 in savings, and 41% have less than £1,000. So almost 30% are, are worried about their level of debt, while 43% of workers don't have anybody else in their household that they could rely on should, um, should they not be able to work. As my colleagues in the advice sector will tell you and have told you, the long-term answer to these issues is not more debt. However, I believe that there is a space for low-cost, fair lending from an organisation which encourages thrift, thrift, I can't say it, they encourage it, encourages thrift and a savings habit. So all our loans, and actually most of um, my colleagues in the credit union sector, they come with a compulsory savings element attached to them. Late last year, I was invited to give a credit union response and perspective to a panel which included our regulators, banks and trade bodies. This was mostly in reaction to the inclusion of the Financial Conduct Authority's review into high-cost credit. So this was the second part, I guess, to, so they've looked at payday lenders, taken some action there, um, but this was about catalogues, credit cards for people with poor credit and rent to buy retailers such as Bright House. I spoke of my frustration when someone comes to us for a consolidation loan with these debts and how we often can't help them because our cheques reveal that they'd struggle to repay us. Yet their creditors have allowed these debts to accumulate to the point where someone can be making monthly repayments of £100, £200 a month for a year, yet it has barely reduced their balance. And that is what we mean when we talk about the debt trap. Where someone ends up paying four or five times what they'd pay for a fridge if they could afford, afford to pay for it in one go. When someone who has never missed a single payment, and this is, a, this is one of our members, has a temporary problem 
and they're told by the creditor, not us, <laughs> um, to get an IVA, or we won't help, get an IVA. So North London Credit Union, we decline around half to 65% of all loan applications that we receive in a month because we believe, as a responsible lender, it's our duty to the applicant to carry out a proper check of affordability and our obligation to our membership to reduce the risk of bad debt because with the credit union, it's the member's money that we're lending out to other members. If someone's circumstances change while they are repaying a loan, we will do everything that we can to help them, provided they stay in contact with us, because otherwise we don't know there's a problem. So I fully support the Breathing Space campaign, for example, and I gave a response to that when we were asked. Um, we can reschedule loans, reduce payments, whatever we can do. Um, it's often difficult to decline a loan. I personally find it very difficult. Um, we want to help, and we know that if we won't lend to them, then the next step is often a lender who isn't as fussy about whether credit is the right solution. We know this, even if it wasn't clear from their paperwork that they gave us when they applied, because they tell us, it doesn't matter, this, this, these people will lend it to us. Or they're angry at us because we are supposed to help people. Regardless, we continue to explain why we can't lend, and suggest how they could fix it or signpost to a local advice agency if necessary. We ask if they want to join us and save for a while. The times when we can't help are of course balanced out by the times that we can and thankfully there are many of those. We have helped people to save for the first time in their lives, so to pay for Christmas without any debt. Um, we've, we've offered a transaction account to people who can't open a bank account so that they can receive their wages or benefits independently for the first time. Our loans have helped members to start and grow businesses, to find their way out of problem debt, to bury loved ones with dignity, to buy furniture or even school uniforms, um, to travel, to fix cars and bikes so they can get to work, to pay for dental surgery. The list is as varied as and eclectic as our membership. Many of our members say that when no one else would help them, we were there for them. Thank you.